So what would you think if I told you that the reason why your life is not the way you want it to be in your money situation, in your relationships, in your health, in just your happiness, you don't feel the way you want to feel on a daily basis. What if I told you the reason why is because there are invisible entities that are floating out there in the world. You can't see them with your eyes, but they're actually there and they are doing everything in their power to hijack your attention so that you feed them all of your attention and that you basically act in accordance with their agenda. These invisible entities are out there, they're floating out in space, you can't see them with your eyes, but they are doing an amazing job of leading you by the nose into all kinds of situations that are not conducive to your happiness, they're not in alignment with your soul, they cause you to act in inauthentic ways, and they cause you to basically feed all of your life force energy into jobs, into relationships, into media, into businesses that are not serving you and they're not serving humanity as a whole. And this is actually the number one reason why you're struggling to achieve alignment with your soul and with your heart in your life and why you experience so many negative emotions on a daily basis. What if I told you that was true? What would you think? You'd say, Adam, that sounds a little bit far-fetched. I don't know, man. Invisible entities floating out there in space. That doesn't seem realistic. That doesn't fit into my notion of common sense. But then what if I told you that your notion of common sense was shaped by a culture that is ruled by these invisible entities that are floating out there in space and that what you think is plausible or implausible the percentages that you're that you're giving to the truth statements that someone makes like oh that's like there's a 20 percent chance that what adam is saying is true or no there's a zero percent chance there's no way that's true that doesn't fit with my idea of science or my idea of physics or metaphysics that can't be possible that's not that's like the weirdest idea i've ever heard adam must be crazy he must be a conspiracy theorist. He might he must have just read too many crackpot books about out there topics that aren't really grounded. They're not really based on anything real and practical, but my world view is super real because everyone else believes it too. <laughs> and when I watch TV and when I watch YouTube, everyone has this common sense practical worldview that there's not invisible entities out there floating attempting to control your attention and to lead you down paths that are not authentic to you so that you feed them your energy it could be your money your attention your sex energy whatever it is there is a agenda you could say of harvesting human energy that sounds very conspiracy theory-ish, and I'm not really interested in entertaining that because it scares me. But what if I told you that that thought pattern of your being skeptical, which is fine, it's actually good to be skeptical because there's a lot of people out there on the internet that are trying to feed you a big load of bullshit. So your skepticism is warranted, and it's very healthy, actually. I'm not asking you to get rid of your skepticism. What I'm asking you here to do in this video is that there is a potential here. I'm claiming here, I'm making a big fat claim that this is probably the one of the most important personal development videos you've ever watched. This is a very key puzzle piece to the question of how do I set up my personal life so that it is in alignment with my heart and my soul? 
so that I can do what I love on a daily basis, so that I can live a life that I love, that I can walk my authentic path and I can feel happiness and satisfaction that is spiritual, that is divine, that is beyond just this you know, physical three-dimensional realm, you know, beyond just the satisfaction of eating tasty food and watching entertaining movies. What if this right here, what I'm about to share with you is the key to aligning your life with your soul so that you can be the best version of yourself? It's just a what if question. I want you to hold that possibility in your mind. You don't know if that's true or not. I could be full of shit. It's a possibility, or I could be on to something, especially considering that I've invested the last eight years of my life deeply, deeply studying personal development, metaphysics, philosophy, spirituality, new age stuff, religion, science, philosophy of science, life coaching, and many, many other topics, (laughs) and what I've discovered is that there is some stuff going on here in your life that is beyond what your eyes can see. And we're going to be exploring this topic today in a lot of detail. So let me give you some context how I even discovered this crazy crackpot sounding idea that I believe is actually true and is actually very practical and important for you to understand. So how did I discover this? So For a very long time, I was trying to set up a life coaching business because I was very interested in personal development. When I was 16 years old, I found that all I was doing all day was just giving my energy and my attention away to external sources that didn't really have my best interests in mind. Most of my time when I was a teenager was just spent playing video games endlessly that would trigger me and make me angry, but I felt like I couldn't quit for some reason. I just would keep playing them over and over again. I would then get so frustrated that I would need to blow off some steam, and the best way that I found to do that is to watch some internet porn or to go out and smoke tons of weed until I'm high and numb, eat junk food, And this cycle would just repeat over and over again for a few years until one day when I was 16 years old, it just kind of all hit me at once. I realized this cycle is not working. I'm trying to gain some kind of happiness, but all I end up doing is just distracting myself and just chasing after the next entertaining thing i'm basically just living like an animal and i'm just feeding all of my precious life energy away out into the void the feeling i had was like i am such an intelligent person with so much potential to be amazing and to offer amazing value to the world my soul really wanted to help the world be an amazing place but I knew this subconsciously, but all I was doing was just like playing endless video games and jacking off and eating junk food and just wasting my life energy. And and something felt like way out of alignment here. Like this was not what I came to earth to do, was just to feed all of my energy and attention into external sources that don't have my best interests in mind. So this is how I discovered personal development. The first teacher I discovered, his name is Leo Gura on actualize.org. I think he's made some, he's made an amazing contribution to the personal development space. And he's made some very in-depth, long, extremely, extremely well-researched content introducing me to stuff like meditation, like spirituality, like practical success advice like reading so i took that that was like a doorway for me into the world of spirituality and into just personal development becoming a better version of myself i realized i didn't have to feed all my life energy into video games and porn and junk food and weed i could just bring that energy back and focus it onto myself 
and focus my life energy on improving myself as a person by doing things like exercising, reading hundreds of books and studying the landscape of life, realizing that I don't know how life works. What society has taught me about how life works just ended up with me <laughs> like a vegetable sitting on, uh, behind my computer wasting my life. The ideas that I've been taught and, and absorbed from culture, family, parents did not produce happiness, which probably means that there's untruth in them. So I, sp I invested so much time just expanding my horizons, researching new perspectives. And one of the perspectives that I discovered was the perspective of law of attraction and specifically reality transurfing. This was something that I was reading because I wanted some help with monetizing my personal development info. I was doing life coaching and I was coaching clients. I was helping people discover their life purpose and make a practical plan for actualizing it and making it real. But I just felt like there was always this like invisible barrier. Like I didn't wasn't able to set up my life the way I wanted it to be. I just always felt like I was missing something in my coaching business. Either I wasn't getting enough clients or I wasn't feeling confident in myself when I was making videos. So long story short, I was looking for help and I discovered Reality Transurfing, which is a, an amazing book that was written by Vadim Zeland, who is a Russian scientist who turned into a philosopher and mystic. And he introduces this concept of energy pendulums, which is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to transfer my face over here to my whiteboard, and we're going to talk about energy pendulums, which is the key of what we're talking about today. All right, so we're here with my whiteboard. This is the book I'm talking about here. It's called Reality Transurfing. And it was written, I believe, in the 2010s. I'm not sure about that, but it's just basically a practical manual for how to get the results that you want in your life and how to stop, stop struggling and fighting with life, but how to actually set up your life so that it's the life you want. It's that's in alignment with your heart and your soul. And there's many, many amazing ideas in this book that I do talk about here on this channel that I will make other videos about really breaking down the, the logic of, of really this new way of seeing life, this, uh, this ability that you can create the life that you authentically want and you don't have to live like a slave living on other people's paths, doing work, that is not authentic to you, being in relationships that you don't want, being forced to live in living situations that are less than what you want. It is possible to get what you want in life. And it's actually relatively easy. It doesn't require too much fighting and struggling and hustling and grinding, but it requires actually reprogramming your mind and retraining your mental habits. So reality transurfing is based on science. It's based on the new understandings and ramifications of quantum physics. So quantum physics, uh, long story short, has shown us that reality is more than just a three-dimensional physical sandbox. We are more than just monkeys <laughs> roaming around on a rock that is floating throughout space, doing our best to get by. This is not what reality actually is. This is one story. This is one context that has been shared in school that you've been taught. But the problem is this is so deeply rooted, this context of what you think life is. It's so deeply rooted that you don't even question its validity. It's like you're a fish in water. You've been living in this context 
for your entire life. You just think you're like a human being. You live on a rock that's floating in space. Reality's physical. Things like ghosts and invisible, you know, entities controlling your attention and spirituality and metaphysical powers like healing and miracles. This stuff can't exist because reality is just a 3D sandbox and we have scientific evidence to prove this, which we don't actually. In fact, the scientific evidence is more so pointing to the opposite, that this story that you've been told that reality is just like physical, three-dimensional, and is non-mystical, the fact that reality is not... The idea that reality is non-mystical is not accurate. And the evidence is actually pointing to this. So you've been raised in a culture that is ideologically attached to the scientific paradigm, which is not fully up to date with at the actual case of what existence and what life actually is. Yes, science is good. Yes, science has some truth. But there's, there's a difference between what science is and then this meta-narrative that you're fed by school and by university and by TV, this narrative of I'm just an ape that lives on a rock that evolved from monkeys and then everything's physical and three-dimensional and material and my mind doesn't have a practical effect on physical reality because physical reality needs to be like moved with your hands. You need to actually build technology and machines to actually like have an impact on reality. If you want to achieve great things in your life, then you need to do lots and lots and lots and lots of work to actually move physical reality because physical reality is difficult to change. It's stuck. It's kind of, it's already there. It, it's there when you're not looking at it. I've made, I've spent the last four years making tons of videos about this topic, such as proof that reality is not physical, such as what is a thought where we go into the, the nature of the scientific paradigm. So there's lots and lots of beliefs that you have in your mind about what reality is and how it works that don't allow you to even consider alternative perspectives, such as the idea that there are non-physical entities that are floating out there in space, out there in the world that are actually hijacking your attention and forcing you to think and act in ways that are not authentic to you. And the, they actually lead you astray. They lead you onto negative lifelines, as it's talked about in reality transurfing. So what reality transurfing is based on is the idea that we've postulated from our discoveries in quantum physics that reality has two sides to it. There is a physical component to reality, which is present right here in this waking moment. The physical reality is right here in front of your face. You can touch it. It's physically manifested, but only for a split second because the other part of reality is the unmanifest, the non-physical, the possibility space. This is like the dream space, actually. When you go to sleep at night, you aren't just going into your own mind one of the ideas of reality transurfing is that dreams are as real as waking reality and your soul actually ventures into other realities in this possibility space. And when you're dreaming at night, that's as real as any other experience you're having when you're awake during the day. There's not much difference between dreams and waking reality, there are some differences, but they're not what you think. See, when you were a kid, you you didn't know that there was a difference between dreams and real life. You thought that your dreams were real. Like when I was a kid, I would have nightmares of like sea monsters and like 
scary things. And my parents had to explain to me, Adam, it's just a dream. It's not real. And you've just had that idea for your entire life. My dreams aren't real. They're just like fantasies. They're just like apparitions of my mind. What if I told you that your dreams are real? And they're just as real as any other experience. This actually makes more sense. And notice that when you're in a dream, what I'm saying now is actually true. It actually is real. When you're in a dream, it actually is real. <laughs> it, it, it's there. You're in it. You believe it. It's real. And then you say, Adam, where does it go when, it wake, when, when I wake up? Well, the answer is it goes back to the possibility space, which is, it's the unmanifest realm. It's infinite potentiality. So quantum physics has literally showed us on the, on the molecular level that a particle has two potential forms. It's either physically manifest as a particle with a definite location, or it's a possibility wave where it could be in any location. So the same is true with actual life. The microcosm reflects the macrocosm. So actual life has two components. There's the physical actual reality that's manifest right here in this moment here. But the next moment is not manifest yet, it's still in the possibility space. It hasn't manifested yet. There's many different possibilities of what the next moment might be. When you go to sleep tonight, you don't know what you're going to dream about. There's literally an infinite uh, possibility space of what you could potentially dream about. So what reality transurfing talks about is how to utilize this possibility space which is actually an accurate way to view reality based on modern quantum physics. It's actually more accurate to view reality this way in terms of the existence of the alternative space, the possibility space. It's more accurate to think of reality this way than it is to think of reality as just like a three-dimensional physical sandbox because our science, when you actually look at the particles with and you actually like measure the particles, you see they behave in this funky way that you can learn about in the double slit experiment, for example, that I'll link below. All right, so forgive me for giving you all of this exposition, but it's very important to have the right context so that you understand that what I'm talking about here is an accurate way to view real life. A lot of ideas that you've gotten from your culture are out of date. They're old and they don't work. <laughs> so what I'm presenting here is a new way to view reality that is based on lots of really good research that I've done. You can check my sources for yourself. I'm doing my best to give you my sources as I'm talking. And I don't want you to just blindly believe me. I want you to take this on as a temporary hypothesis, maybe Adam's right. I don't know, but what I do want you to do is to just try to your best to understand what I'm saying and test the action steps that I'm gonna give you for yourself. Actually start to see these things called pendulums functioning in your life, and I'm gonna show you how to unhook yourself from them so that they're not ruining your life so that you can live your life authentically according to what you actually want. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. What actually are pendulums? So very interestingly, we have this notion uh, in our modern day information sphere of the law of attraction. The law of attraction is this idea that your thoughts are actually things and your thoughts actually impact your life. This is because when you focus your attention energy on a specific part of reality, it, it could be an emotion inside your body, it could be a thought flickering on your mind, but 
when you focus your attention on it, what happens is you start to resonate with it. You start to vibrate on the same frequency that the thought is. So if you're focusing on a thought of anger, for example, and you're very angry and pissed off at life, then your whole body actually starts to resonate and vibrate at the vibration of anger. You know when you can kind of just tell that someone else is feeling angry without them having to say it? Maybe one of your family members that you live with. You, you can just tell by the way they're walking, the way they're holding their body, maybe they, the, their tone of voice subconsciously. You can tell when someone's angry even when they don't explicitly tell you. This is because their whole body is resonating at the frequency of anger and this actually determines the way that th that person's reality will react to them. Because reality is like a mirror and like energy resonates with like energy. So when I'm resonating on the vibration of anger, my reality is going to mirror that and is going to give me a lot of things to be angry about and is actually going to piss me off even more. Have you noticed that when you're already angry, <laughs> then all kinds of things that wouldn't normally piss you off start to piss you off a lot easier and a lot quicker and all of a sudden you have all sorts of reasons to be even more angry. So it's like people who are complainers always find things to complain about. Whereas people who are happy and are who, who are in a state of love, people who love life always find a reason to be grateful and to love life. So reality mirrors your emotional energy and your thought energy. So let's take this idea to the next level so this is where energy pendulums come in so when a group of people start resonating and thinking and feeling and emoting on the same frequency this is not just one individual person but an entire group what this does is this cre it creates a thought form or like an energy pendulum so this picture here i have of there's all these brains and they're all kind of feeding into this one collective thought form. It's an energy pendulum. The way I think of it in my mind, it's almost like a vortex. And then everyone is kind of feeding their energy into the vortex by vibrating on its frequency. So when you vibrate and you have the same thoughts and you act in the same way, that everyone else in this particular group is acting, then you fall under the pendulum sway. So you literally become an adherent of the pendulum. So a pendulum, what it is, is an energetic structure that arises from a group of people thinking and acting in the same way. It's like a group think. So... A good example, I'm going to get into tons of examples of pendulums. A good example is going to the gym. When you go to the gym, the second you walk into the building, now you are part of the gym pendulum. Where everyone in the gym, there's like a certain code. There's a certain rule of behavior. You know, when you go into the gym, there's like certain people that you just always see. You know, you always see the, the bodybuilder guy who's just like slamming weights and who's like grunting and squealing like, Ugh! Ugh! you know, with his boys slapping him on the back with chalk on their hands. You always see uh, the girl that's on the Stairmaster who's, you know, checking to see if, you know, people are looking at her. You know, you always see that one guy who's like, so, like self-conscious, who has, you know, skinny twig arms and who's, you know, trying to figure out how to use the weights. You always see that really overweight person who's like walking on the treadmill trying to lose weight and they're just sweating, just like drenched in sweat. What, what I'm trying to say here is that this gym is, it's a pendulum, which means it's, it's almost like a, a movie, a movie set. And 
everyone in there is like a character playing a role. And the role isn't like a conscious choice. Like they think that they're consciously choosing their their actions and their thoughts and their emotions, but they're not. They're actually feeding into the general pendulum of the gym. So when you behave according to the, the gym's rules and you do, you know, the exercise that everyone else is doing in the exact same way and you behave the way everyone else is behaving, you think the way everyone else is thinking, you, you actually pick up on these collective thought forms. When you go to the gym, there's a lot of collective thought forms that are just literally floating there in the space. You can't see them with your eyes, but you can pick up on them. The thoughts you're having aren't even fully your thoughts. Like, for example, in my everyday life, I don't really care too much about like having huge muscles. I like working out, but I don't really want to be like, you know, some like extremely jacked person. But all of a sudden, when I'm at the gym, all of a sudden, I'm like caring about like how my biceps look or like how my abs look. And that's fine. But normally, like in my normal life, like if I were to live in a forest and not be at any gyms, not be around gyms, I wouldn't have those thoughts. Like how do my abs look? But since you're in the area and you're, you're in that pendulum, you have, you pick up on the collective thoughts and they kind of hijack your attention. So the gym is just one example and you can go to the gym and not feed into the pendulum. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow the exact workout routine that everyone else is doing. You could do something new and weird. Like when I go to the gym, I do weird stretches and, and I, you know, lie down on the floor and roll around and, you know, do handstands and, and stuff. This is not in the script. It's, you know, the, the normal script is you just show up, you put on your music, you do your bicep curls in the exact same way every single time like a routine like a character on a script and you can break the script so you don't have to be in the pendulum when you go to the gym but this is just one example i'm giving you to um describe pendulums so i'm going to give you tons of examples before we get into the examples i want to just give you some general qualities of pendulums so you can understand how they behave and how they function so that they don't rule your life anymore and so that you can have autonomy and independence with how you think and act so that you can genuinely create the life that you authentically want. So some of the qualities of pendulums are that these collective thought forms don't care about you as an individual, but they only care about themselves and their own survival. The pen, this collective thought that has been fed into by all these people, this creates its own separate entity, which is an energy pendulum. So the, the collective thoughts of everyone thinking and behaving along the same lines, this creates almost like an energetic groove in the ocean of consciousness. If you can imagine reality like a giant ocean of consciousness, when everyone's thinking and acting along the exact same lines, this creates a habit pattern, but a pendulum is almost like a collective habit pattern of thought. So it's almost like a vortex is being formed in the, the ocean of consciousness. And when you get too close to it, um, it, it can kind of suck you in and then you're kind of just like in this vortex and you're behaving and thinking according to other people's standards and other people's thoughts and ideas, but you're not behaving authentically according to your heart and your soul. So the pendulum doesn't care about you, but the pendulum, all it wants is to survive. So just like you as an individual entity, this pendulum is also an individual entity as well. Now, I don't know if it has its own like thoughts or if it has its own like ego structure or if it even has its own consciousness or its own awareness. I don't think it does. Uh, I don't think it has its own consciousness and awareness. There are some other uh, invisible entities that exist that I don't know if they're the same as pendulums, but they're like... Um, 
uh, entities, uh, all kind of like spirits, uh, demons, that kind of stuff does exist. I've been researching it. Uh, the, the, it. There's tons of evidence for the existence of these things, but that's out of the scope of this video. I'm not quite sure yet whether pendulums and entities are and thought forms, whether they're all the same thing. Uh, the technicalities, I'm still ironing out. But definitely things like demons, ghosts, uh, invisible entities, they do exist and they can hijack your consciousness and get you to think and behave in ways that are not authentic to you. And you can imagine it almost like something is hijacking you and is like causing you to act and behave in ways that give feed your energy into a video game you're feeding all of your emotional energy and your attention your thought energy and your life force is being fed into this video game a good example is like league of legends league of legends is a giant pendulum there's lots of adherents many 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 people millions of people play league of legends on a daily basis even me, I sometimes I would play League of Legends. And this is a video game that doesn't care about you as an individual. It doesn't care about your life and you living according to your soul's dictates and your soul's longings. League of Legends, all it wants is to survive. And now all the people who work there at, at the game studio, all the people who think about it and play it they are now feeding into this this agenda this this groove this whirlpool in the ocean of consciousness this giant whirlpool of just league of legends this pendulum doesn't care about you it only cares about surviving itself league of legends is like now its own entity and it doesn't want to die it wants to survive as long as possible so it's constantly going to be doing things like updating the game, finding new ways to hook people in so that it stays alive as long as possible. So the pendulums take on a life of their own. We're going to give you more examples, but first the qualities of pendulums. The way pendulums hook into your attention is via the illusion of importance. So when you're lost in a pendulum dream, the reason why it's called the pendulum, by the way, is because it kind of sways back and forth. And when you're swaying with it, when you're like, it kind of hypnotizes you. Like, you know, when a hypnotist is like, has that thing that's going back and forth, it kind of like, you can hypnotize you because you're on the same frequency as them. Um, it, it's like hypnotic suggestion. That's exactly how pendulums work. They kind of, there's this kind of pattern and energy that like lulls you to sleep. And then when you're asleep, you become a character on a script and you just become like a, a blind adherent for this pendulum. You work for it. You give it your money. You give it your sex energy. You give it your thoughts, your emotions. You care about it. And you think it's the most important thing in the world. That's how the pendulum stays hooked into you when you think it's important. We'll give you more examples. It feeds on your attention, your energy. That's your life force, your awareness, your attention. Where you're directing your attention is where your energy flows. So when you're directing your attention to a specific porn video or a specific Instagram model or a specific YouTube video, you're actually feeding your energy into that thing. And then you have to be very careful and ask yourself, what it what is this pendulum doing with my energy is it trying to help me or is it trying to take advantage of me and just feed on my energy and what it this pendulum can do is it will lead you off your authentic path so that you are doing as the pendulum wants you to do but you're not doing what your soul authentically wants you to do so a good example might be working a job that overtakes your entire life and it becomes a part of your identity. Like a friend of mine was a car salesman, but his soul didn't want to be a car salesman. He just was doing it because his friend was doing it. So he was just like, oh, I guess I'll do it too. And 
this is the pendulum rule. Do as I do. So when you're when he was working at the car dealership, now he had to behave according to the car dealership standards. He had to wear the uniform. He had to talk a certain way. He had to follow the script. Literally, when you're selling a car, you literally have to follow the script. <laughs> you have to th now care about it, right? Like, oh, I hope I get promoted. <laughs> and now the pendulum's goals has replaced your authentic heart goals. My friend's authentic heart goals wasn't to be a car salesman, but the pendulum can trick you. It can lull you to sleep where you become a character in somebody else's game. This leads you to live out of alignment with your true heart, and uh, it just makes you sad, makes you suffer. It makes you do things that are inauthentic. And you don't get the life you want when you fall to a pendulum. And then by the time you're old and you spent your whole life feeding someone else's agenda, the pendulum will just throw you out and doesn't give a fuck about you. The, the car dealership doesn't care about your soul. <laughs> it just wants to feed its own agenda of making money and staying alive. Even the manager there isn't aware of what's going on. It's just like this this entity, this collective entity that's just like surviving. So the pendulum rule, you'll see, do as I do. Obey my rules. And the way the pendulums try to provoke you is by spiking your emotions. So you like advertisements is a good example of this, like, Quickly, very important, last chance to, to, you know, something bad is will happen unless you click on this ad. So that's just like a pendulum trying to provoke you by spiking your emotions, okay? So let's get into practical examples of pendulums so that you can spot them and you can understand the deep mechanics of how they work. Uh, Sun Tzu in The Art of War said, if you want to defeat your enemy, you need to understand your enemy first. All right, so a great example of a pendulum is a sports game. Fantastic example. I actually took a screenshot here of uh, CNBC, uh, this news article. Why being a sports fan and rooting for a team is good for you? Oh, <laughs> sounds like something a pendulum would say, not um, like, what the fuck? Like, that's the stupidest thing I... <laughs> the the sport what is happening is that when you're in that stadium and you're like even if you're watching on tv you literally fall into this like whirlpool of illusion where now you think the game is important <laughs> it's actually important whether you know Kyrie you know hits the three and scores because it's an important game <laughs> This is the playoffs. So the way pendulums hook into you is by increasing the stakes, making the game seem more important than it actually is. This is what pendulums do. They make it seem more important. They add importance, like the League of Legends Cup, the World Finals, you know, the commentators. All the commentators are doing is they're trying to make this stupid League of Legends game seem like it's like historically significant like oh skt won the world championship and like as if that matters right so esports regular sports and when you're a fan when you're a fan all of those fans what what the pendulum's trying to do is get all of the energy the emotional energy from the fans and they're it's feeding into this pendulum and it's keeping it alive the pendulum functions more strongly the more people are feeding it their emotional attention energy so the game uh you know something wrong your team starts losing and now you start getting anxious and angry and you start crying because your team got knocked out think about it how fucking stupid is it for you to actually care about your stupid fucking sports team as if like that's the reason why your soul came to earth because of your stupid fucking sports team like you you know like oh ac milan they they lost the the game 
Like, dude, your life energy is literally being fed into something that literally doesn't benefit you. Like, who cares about AC Milan and what they're doing in soccer? Yeah, sure, maybe you're interested in the sport. Okay, maybe it's fun for you. Okay, maybe it inspires you. Okay, sure. There's nothing wrong with being a sports fan. I like watch, I'll go to a basketball game. I don't care. But the point is, a lot of people, if you become like a diehard fan, all of your life energy is just going into thinking and caring about sports. But that's such a waste of your life energy. It could be put into something more creative, something more original, something more unique and authentic and useful to the overall trajectory of human evolution. <laughs> Instead of caring about your stupid sports team is losing. All right, another example of pendulums is a protest. So pendulums like to rally people around one extremely important cause. It's so important. But it, remember, it's the illusion of importance. It's not actually as, as important as you think it is. But it's so important. So now everyone, all of these poor people here, all of their thought energy, their emotional energy, even their life, like what are, what are you doing? You're standing there? Like go make some art or go help you go meditate in the forest why are you standing in a crowd of angry people right that's probably not you know what their soul wants to be doing but the pendulum got them it hooked into them with the illusion of importance they feel every single person in this crowd feels like they have to be there because there's an important cause that we're fighting for see enough is enough so, so pendulums will always um, give you some kind of enemy to fight against. Enough is enough. There's some reason to make you feel indignant. This is actually on a metaphysical level. This is how dreams hook you. The, when you're, you know, like when you're dreaming at night, like why don't you just realize that you're dreaming? Why is it so convincing? Why does it suck you in? The reason why is because you're emotionally bought in. Something triggered you. There's either some cute girl that you want to ask out, or there's a monster that's chasing you, or there's like your favorite song is playing. The way that the dream hooks you in is by riling up your emotions, riling up your emotions. This is how pendulums work. We need a scapegoat. Like... It, when you start to see what I'm saying, you start to see just like how obvious, like they're, like the news, for example, they just push your emotional hot buttons. They're literally just trying to get a reaction. Like the other day I was, I was eating dinner at, at my parents' house and my, and my dad was watching the news as they normally do. And he was just getting angry at like what the news was saying. He was just like, like all oh, those fucking idiots. It's like, dad. The words that the, the news anchor is choosing and the journalist, the words they're choosing are specifically designed to trigger your emotions so that you waste your precious life energy feeding into this dog shit nonsense that's useless, that doesn't actually help you or benefit you in any way. And it's not just my family. Like it's it's this is this is happening on a global scale. One another great example is business advice. Oh my God, this was actually the thing that really blew my mind and really made me understand pendulums. Was when I was learning how to start a coaching business, I felt like I didn't know how to do it, so I looked for advice online. I looked at guys like Sam Ovens consulting.com, Russell Brunson. There's all these ideas of like how to market your business, how to set up your coaching program, how to make a course, the proper way to do it, how to make a funnel, how to make a lead magnet, how to do it. And yes, there is advice out there that can genuinely help you. So I'm not saying that these people suck or that they haven't helped other people or that they... They aren't good teachers, but if they're not conscious of the energy mechanics of pendulums, unconsciously what always ends up happening is they create some kind of course or training program that's saying, 
do as I do. Do this. This is how you make money. This is how you succeed in your life. Do this. Use this model. Use this marketing software. Set your course up this way. This should be your price. Do as I do. This is important because if you don't do as I do, you won't make any money and you'll be poor and no one will love you. They don't say that explicitly, but that's the, the emotional hot button they're tapping into. The need for money. So people need money and, and they're so attached to it, they don't trust their own heart, their own heart inclinations to, to lead them down a synchronistic path where money will be available for them in abundance as a side effect of doing what they love and what they're excited to do. They don't trust that. They need to give their attention to someone else who's going to teach them the best business model, the best way to make money. Do as I do. Invest in this stock, in this coin, etc. So an example is the the school games. So Alex Hermosi, who's a great guy, by the way, great teacher, cool guy. I don't have any beef with these guys, but they're just not aware of the metaphysical principle. Well, they actually are. They actually are subconsciously. But what they did is they started this thing called the school games, which school is a community software that I use actually. And it's, it's a great software. I love it. I've even recommended it in the past. So you should use it. It's great. Um, but what they've done, very intelligent business people, extremely intelligent. What they've done is, is they've created this like game where it's like this gigantic competition called the school games where they basically, everyone's competing with each other to like make the most money. And then the reward is that you get to go talk to Alex Hermosi and Sam Ovens. And that's fine. Cool. Great. And they give you some advice. I'm sure this will help many people. However, unfortunately, uh, you have to play by their rules. You have to set up your business the way that they suggest you do. You have to take a monthly payment, for example. And what I found is that the best way if you want to succeed in like online coaching, for example, is not to take a monthly payment, but to charge for a result charge based on the result you're going to give them not monthly or not per hour so many people will say oh if you want to do coaching you know charge per hour that's a terrible idea etc so there's just lots of business advice out there that'll just tell you like how to run your business so that it, it succeeds and then what ends up happening is that you're running a business but it's not authentically aligned with your heart and you're doing things because you feel like you have to like for example like taking sales calls in order to sign clients this was something that it was told me, it was taught to me. The only way to sell high ticket clients is by taking sales calls where you actually have to talk to them on the phone so that they feel comfortable paying you. But another one of my business coaches kind of broke that whole pendulum for me, that whole paradigm by telling me that he charges like 10 grand for his coaching and he doesn't do sales calls. They just, they pay off uh, from a, a payment page. So I tried doing that myself and I, people started paying me just from a link, just like a payment link. I didn't have to do a sales call, nothing. It was just like, it was amazing because I was so worried that like, oh, if I want to grow my coaching business, I have to take all these sales calls and I don't authentically want to do that. I'd rather spend my time, you know, walking in the forest, <laughs> meditating, you know, reading books. I, I don't want to, you know, talk to all these people who some of them may not even sign up. Like, I don't want to do sales calls, basically. So what I do now is I just, I charge based on a page. And I that's the way my authentic soul wanted to run the business, trusting the way my soul wants to run my business, not doing things in my business because that's the way it's always been done. That's the way it's supposed to be done. I have to do it this way. I have no choice. Otherwise, see... This kind of thinking, not questioning the status quo, this is what um, causes you to be a pendulum's adherent. And I was going to say a pendulum's bitch, which you're, you're living your life, but it's not the way you want. It's the way someone else told you to, and it's inauthentic. 
The kings of the pendulums, religion, these are like the old school pendulums. These pendulums have been functioning. They have got it down to a science. If you want a great example of how pendulums work, uh, study religion very closely. They, they, got it, they got it all down to a science. There's, look at all these people, you know, coming from far and wide to worship this, uh, this big black box. This is a sacred site in Islam called Mecca. Um, maybe I'd like to visit it one day. That'd be cool. And yeah, religion helps many people. It helps keep the fabric of society together in certain areas of the world so that people aren't raping and murdering each other at their will, but there, it creates a sort of stability, rules, and laws. It gives many people meaning and purpose in their life. So, okay, great. Um, but at the end of the day, it just turns into this uh, gigantic pendulum that's just sucking your life energy. And then you, if you want to follow the religion, you have to follow its rules. You have to do as the priest does. Do as your fellow Christians do or your fellow Muslims, your fellow Jews. You have to wear the, the special hat. You have to go to church on the special day. You can't live authentically what you want to do. You can't wear a different uniform. God forbid you wear a different hat to church. Then the, the pendulum won't accept you anymore. You have to do as I do if you want to be accepted. Because if you don't do as I do, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> Something bad's going to happen to you. Your parents are going to kick you out of the house. Your boss is going to fire you. And then you're going to be lost. You're going to be homeless. You're going to be exiled. And then you can't survive being your authentic self, doing what your soul wants, following your authentic inclinations and intuition. You can't survive doing that. You got to do what everyone else is doing. They already set the rules for you. You just follow and shut the fuck up. The old school pendulums, the, the, the religions. Another fantastic example of uh, pendulums is personal development advice one thing pendulums do is they instill goals in your consciousness that aren't even your goals. <laughs> like I have the example here of um, Chad over here, Chad McChaddington, who's all sexy and you know his jaw is so sharp that it can cut uh, 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 Italian salami. This goal in many cases was given to you by someone else. Someone else told you you need to have a chiseled jaw. Someone else told you that you need to have eight-pack abs so that girls like you, so that you're popular, so that you be an alpha male. Someone else told you that you need to have a chiseled body. And hey guys, guess what? I like going to the gym and I like working on my body and I'm honestly pretty jacked, to be honest. Like, But... The point is, I do that for me. I'm not doing that because Hamza or some other guy. I'm sorry for the name dropping, guys. I, I, you know, it's all love here. Like, I'm not trying to be like, you know, I, I respect all, you know, personal development creators. And I know everyone's trying their best. And I know I, all these people are like helping other people genuinely in many cases. But th it, it can turn unconscious very quick if you're not understanding the deeper energy dynamics of what's happening so that's all i'm trying to do is just point out the deeper energy dynamics like when you're doing personal development coaching this is a big one or you're making videos and you're setting a goal an example for other people and you're giving people hey you should want to have uh you know a chiseled body you should want to have an aesthetic body. You should go to the gym six days a week. You should work hard. You should discipline yourself. You should do all this stuff even if you don't feel like it, even if your heart's telling you not to. Fuck that. Do it anyways. Normally, you can tell the goal is not authentically yours because it feels like a grind in order to stay on the path. So you know, you're not able to go to the gym six days a week because you authentically don't even want to be there six days a week. That's not what your soul actually wants. That's not the authentic way that you want to work on your body. Maybe you want to do something else, but 
that you your goal has been replaced by someone else's goal and now you're going to the gym and you you're burning out like, oh I, I for some reason I, I get so exhausted when I go to the gym six days a week and I stay for two hours and I do all these exercises and I'm so exhausted and I have no more energy to like actually you know enjoy my life so the pendulum will always tell you sacrifice today so that you can be happy later but you we all know how that game works it's the happiness is always a little bit later a little bit later and just if just keep working hard you're not working hard enough that's why you're you're not getting the results because you're a pussy you're not working hard enough you're not grinding hard enough but this is actually what masters tell their slaves when they start to get tired you're not working hard enough work harder and maybe you'll get a reward this is what uh you know corporate ceos tell their employees work harder you're not working hard enough of course it's not working for you of course you're not getting the results that i promised you're not working hard enough so when you work harder that just feeds more energy into the pendulum more struggle more grind more anger more importance more importance is being fed into the pendulum what if what is then someone like me a crazy person like me comes and tells you you know you can achieve your authentic goal in life just by being your authentic self and going with the flow and allowing it to be easy allowing reality to help you and to to guide you on your path and to to have this kind of synchronistic spontaneous style of goal achievement you can achieve goals like an enlightened master just by listening to your heart and your intuition and going with the flow and following your excitement and not doing what other people are telling you to do but just following your authentic self a crazy person like that uh, like me comes and tells you that you're like that's impossible i thought the only way to succeed was to just work and work and work like like uh like a slave and then people in the comments of the videos they sometimes they'll tell me they'll say adam that's not how reality works you're saying life is easy and that i can create my reality but that's not my life experience i have to grind and fight and struggle maybe it's easy for you because you're a young kid or whatever but as you get older then you'll understand that life is a a struggle and a grind and it doesn't work according to your idealistic fantasies what this person's not understanding is that life is a mirror when you believe you're a slave and you're giving all of your energy away to a pendulum when you're thinking based on what other people told you and when you're there's too much importance you're too attached to the outcome you're like a character running on a script you don't know how to detach from your thoughts and sit in perfect peace and fulfillment just in meditation you can just be empty and just be fulfilled as yourself and then live authentically in a high vibration state and watch and see how money takes care of itself what this person is not understanding is that they're choosing to live as a slave by feeling that there is no choice so we're going to get to that in a second so more examples of pendulums chess any kind of board game it's just a group of people thinking along the same lines so much importance and thought energy is going into like the chess world championship for example think about how much energy how many people are watching and they want to make sure you want to see who wins right or at least i do i like watching chess just know that it's a pendulum maybe like when i watch a lot of chess videos for example all of a sudden i want to play chess online all of a sudden i i start thinking about like improving my chess skills but yeah okay maybe that's fun for a little bit but does my soul really want to be like a grandmaster chess player no that's someone else's goal 
The pendulum wants you to be a grandmaster chess player, not your soul. Other examples of pendulums are like ancient languages, languages that have been forgotten where no one knows how to speak them anymore. That's an example of a dead pendulum where everyone stopped feeding it its, its attention energy that it needs to survive. So the pendulum stopped swaying and it, it died. So like an, an ancient forgotten language that no one remembers how to speak it anymore. That's an example of a dead pendulum. No one knows how to use it anymore. Or like uh, uh, like putting leeches on your patients in order to uh, bloodlet them so that to cure their diseases. That's an example of an out-of-date medical practice. That's an out-of-date pendulum that's dead now because no one does it anymore. But modern languages are examples of pendulums that are still intact. So I saw this YouTube video of this woman who was trying to keep alive this ancient language. It was like this of, of her people. It was this like ancient tribal language. And she was the last person who remembered how to speak it. So she was doing her best to teach it to other people so that it doesn't die out. She doesn't want her, her native language to die out. But she's not realizing that she's just being hijacked by a pendulum because this old language doesn't want to die. <laughs> if it dies with her, then it dies forever. So this old pendulum is using this woman as like a vehicle to like perpetuate its, its existence. Other examples, video games, university, talk about false goals. They're not actually your goals. You have to follow the system, follow the program go through our step-by-step -step program and then you'll have the life you want, right? No, it usually doesn't work like that. Here, take, university is a great example of a pendulum because it's like the path has already been carved for you. So you can just shut your brain off and just follow like a sheep. You don't have to do the hard emotional labor of like discovering your soul's purpose you know, creating authentic, unique art that's never been seen before, creating some new business that's, that helps people and serves people. You don't have to like carve your own path in the world. You can just follow our pre-established path. Just follow the conveyor belt and then you'll, you'll get a job at the end and then you'll just be a pendulum's bitch for the rest of your life. You have a sad, dissatisfied life doing shit that you don't authentically even want to do. Oh, you want to be a lawyer? Really? <laughs> you really you came to Earth to be a lawyer. Yeah. I'm sure that's very fulfilling for, for your soul, going through these technical little... There's probably like one out of every thousand lawyers that who... It's actually their like passion. They love being a lawyer. And for them, great. Good. They should continue doing that because that's their authentic passion. But for every one lawyer who is authentically living their soul's purpose, there's 999 of them that are just doing it because their parents wanted them to do it or because they thought they saw on TV that being a lawyer is very prestigious or someone told them that if they have a lot of money, then girls will like them. So they're doing it inauthentically. They're afraid of doing what their heart actually wants them to do. More examples. Science massive gigantic pendulum that um, causes people to think in the same way along the same lines it's, it's a group think many people may say well science no i thought science was just the objective studying of how reality works and the answer is no there's a lot of group think in science and the history of scientific revolutions has shown us that um, the pendulum of science is very ruthless to people who want to challenge the status quo. Like Albert Einstein, for example, when he discovered the special theory of relativity when he was 23 years old, or I don't know how old he was. I don't know how old he was when he discovered it, but I'm 23 years old. The, the established paradigm of science, all of the old scientists were like, you're not allowed to 
you know, invent relativity because they want, they thought that science was like objective and not subjective. I, I, they didn't like the idea of relativity. They accused Einstein of being a, a Jew <laughs> to, it, to in, impose Jewish ideas into the domain of physics, which I don't, doesn't even make sense to me. But the point is that Einstein was attacked for trying to evolve science and to have new ideas. And this, this is how it has always been. Whenever there's new ideas that are introduced uh, in, in science, there's vehement resistance because the, the pendulum of science doesn't like people to be unique thinkers. You have to do as I do. You have to follow the pendulum's rule. All right, so political agendas, it's very obvious. The news, pornography, very obvious. I'm just trying to siphon your energy. Arguing with your family. It's a big pendulum. The pendulums try to provoke you. So sometimes a uh, pendulum will... I know I'm using the word pendulum a lot. Uh, I just, you know, try not to get sick of it. A lot of times a uh, pendulum will hijack one of your family members and cause them to just start poking you and annoying you with that exact thing. The pendulum knows exactly what annoys you. The exact words to say or the exact wrong time to come and bother you. The pendulum knows when you're already frustrated and knows how to poke your buttons so that you blow up and get triggered so that you feed it your energy. Your job is probably, it's just one gigantic pendulum. And all I drew these arrows here because all of your attention and life force energy that could be going into creating passionate art that helps humanity evolve and become better and, and you know, improve the state of the earth and to express your soul's passion to the world. All of that precious life energy is just going into clicking around and doing logistical tasks for your boss who is just serving a pendulum. And people say, but Adam, if I don't work my job, then I'm going to have no money and I'm, and, and I'm going to be poor. I, I have to work my job. I'm forced. Yeah, that's exactly what pendulums will do is they'll make you feel like you have no choice, like you're backed into a corner. But there's always a choice in life. You don't have to continue doing work that you don't like. Sure, maybe you can't quit tomorrow, but in a couple months, if you develop an exit strategy, maybe if you study something else on the weekends, or if you develop some, you know, work on a YouTube channel or something on the side for six months, and then monetize that or start some kind of side business, there's always a way out. You're never forced to... to continue living an unwanted life path but it'll make you it'll feel that way it'll feel like you're forced because of the illusion of importance you feel like the situation is life or death when it's actually not if you quit your job it's actually not life or death there's there's alternative ways to survive and there's there's other, like you're not gonna die all right so how do you break free from the pendulum's rule and the pendulum's influence on your life so that you're not feeding all of your life energy into other people's agendas. The, f the, most in the best way to beat the pendulums is to reduce importance. The only way a pendulum can hook into you is if you think that the situation at hand is very important. You're emotionally attached to it in some way. But pendulums can't hook into you if you have no attachments. If you're empty, they can't hook into emptiness. So one of the best ways to reduce importance and to reduce the pendulum's effect on your life is to practice meditation and to invest 30 minutes a day just sitting 
and not reacting to your thoughts, being a neutral observer. Just neutrally observe your thoughts. I have a whole guide how to meditate for beginners. I'll I'll click it, I'll check it here. But meditation can help you with not immediately following these thoughts that are popping up and are trying to hook into you and, and make it seem important. So when you sit and meditate, what you'll notice very quickly is that within one minute, all of a sudden you've fallen into some la-la land, some imaginary dream. And now you're thinking and scheming and planning something else because you think it's important. So as you're sitting there, you start to see how your mind is this. You have this habitual tendency to fall asleep and to give your attention away to provoking influences. Here's a thought experiment. She's just maybe just consider what if most of the thoughts in your mind are actually pendulums trying to hook into you so that you feed them your attention energy. So when you're sitting there and you're meditating and you've just spent the last two minutes thinking about some completely different thing, consider that you're actually, you're, you're feeding this pendulum sway and you can easily, easily drop this by just coming back to your breath, dropping importance. When something appears in your experience, it could be a sound or an emotion or a pain or a thought, don't give it any importance. Just watch it. Don't let it trigger you and suck you in. This is the practice of meditation. I've spoken about this for the last four years on this channel. I have many video guides about it. What if the feeling of peace and well-being that comes after meditation practice is actually the result of regaining control over your attention and allowing it to rest in its natural space? What if your natural state is actually to feel calm and peaceful and abundant and full of life energy. But the pendulums constantly provoke you. Your habit pattern is to constantly feed your life energy into these thoughts, into external things. And that's why you feel drained and angry and depressed and, and out of control in your life. You feel like you don't have control of your life. You don't feel peaceful and grounded. You don't have control over your attention. Your natural state is to feel really good. But the only way to reconnect with your natural state is to reprogram your mental habits to, to abide in the self abide in your awareness stay in the awareness point don't let your attention get sucked into the screen of life life is like a movie your attention is used to being sucked into the screen either the outer screen the things that are happening around you or the inner screen your thoughts and ideas and daydreams your attention is hijacked and sucked into one of these two screens the inner screen or the outer screen and when it is, you're like a character on a script. When you're lost in the dream, your attention is 100% focused on a video game or on what's happening around you or on a conversation or on a thought in your mind. You're not, you no longer have free will because you don't have free will and control over your attention. Then you behave and act and think like a character on a script. And you start doing things and behaving and living inauthentically. And you start giving your energy, your precious life energy away to external sources. So that's the main way to reduce importance is to sit and meditate. Hello, you're waving. Hi. <laughs> Other ways to reduce importance. One way is just to make the whole thing a joke. 
Don't take it so seriously. Don't take life so seriously. Don't take this thing that's trying to provoke your emotions. Don't take it so seriously. I have a whole video called How to Stop Being So Serious and Uptight All the Time. If you're being serious and uptight, you know that a pendulum has hooked into you. Because seriousness is actually another word for importance. So ask yourself, how am I making this situation seem more important than it actually is? If I zoom out and look at the big picture of things, this test that I'm taking in school or this soccer game that I'm watching isn't actually important in the grand scheme of things. So when you zoom out, you realize that your life is like a movie and you actually, instead of being invested in the movie, but you take a step out into the auditorium and you watch from a distance, like as part of the audience, when you watch your life as the witness, no longer are you attached and these things don't seem as important anymore. What person slash thing am I attached to getting? What end result am I attached to? And can I surrender my need to even have the end result? What if I just accept failure? What if I just accept not ever getting the thing that I want? So for example, before I go to make a video, and I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to make the video bad or it's going to go wrong. One thing I had to learn how to do was to just not care whether the video turns out well or not. Just I accept failure before you even start doing the, the thing. Importance drops. What's my plan B? So a good way to drop importance is to give yourself a safety net. If you're walking on a tightrope, it, that's suspended in the in Niagara Falls and you're afraid of falling a hundred feet to your death and you're on this thin tightrope, one of the best ways to reduce importance so that you can hold your balance in life is to put a safety net underneath. You can't lie to yourself. If you're actually perched on, on the middle of a tightrope, walking on some gigantic cliff you can't lie to yourself and say that everything's going to be okay when you can see if you fucking if you fall you're going to die so the only way to reduce importance is to actually give yourself a fallback a plan b a safety net if i fall at least there's someone that there that's there that's going to catch me or something's going to catch me so give yourself a plan b a way out okay if i fail if it fails, what's like the worst case scenario, scenario and how, and then deal with it before it happens. It's called a pre-mortem. Before things hit the fan, how do you prevent, how do you like, what's your plan B, your exit strategy? So if I take a step back and watch this situation, yeah, watch it from a movie. And then uh, the last way to reduce importance is Whenever you find yourself making something complicated and difficult and adding so many steps, I learned this in business. I would add all these like funnel steps and I would make this thing so complicated. But then I, I had to ask myself, what if I just make this as simple and easy as possible? Kind of like what I'm doing now. I'm just sitting, looking at my camera. I got my notes right here. And then you, you get to look at my notes as I talk. It's very simple. It's not complicated. There's no like fancy bells and whistles. It's just, I just made the thing simple. It's easy. And like I mentioned before, the example with the payment page, instead of having this whole complicated sales process of like they click here and then they have to go here, then they have to book a call, then they have to sign up and they have to fill out an application form and this and that. What if I just make it simple? What if they just pay on a page? So how can I make this simple and easy? Okay. All right. So now what? We've explored what pendulums are. They're energetic thought forms that arise from collective thought energy, thinking along the same frequency, along the same lines. What do I do with this information? It's right here. 
wake up and live your authentic path. Now, I have a whole video. I just talked about it recently. I'll link it over here. What does this actually mean to wake up and live your authentic path? It means to know that your heart has a plan for you. It means to wake up and know that your heart knows what it wants here in this life. And if you just live in authentic alignment with your heart and not live on other people's paths, not follow pendulums and give all your energy away, but you live in accordance with what you authentically want, you focus your attention on your true goal. The video I linked, um, it's called How to Discover Your True Goal or something like that. I'll tell you how to discover your true goal and how to align your thought energy with your true goal and live from the wish fulfilled. Live in your true goal all day, every day so that your internal energy is resonating at the frequency of already having what you want, then the mirror of life will show you that you do already have what you want. And your external reality will mirror your internal state that you cultivate within by folk taking control of your attention. So this requires reprogramming of your mental habits. You have this terrible habit of falling asleep every second. <laughs> you, 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 you forget that you're alive. You fall asleep in the dream. In the Bhagavad Gita, there's a great quote that says, what normal people call day is actually the night of ignorance to the wise. What you normally call day, your waking life, that's not actually you being awake. That's actually you being asleep. You're, you're falling asleep. You're, you're, in, you're in circumstances. You're like a character in a movie. You're playing a role, playing a script. So you need to replace the habit of falling asleep with the habit of waking up, learning how to meditate, and then bringing the meditation into your daily life. I've spoken about that in other videos. That, that's so key. You have to reprogram this mental habit. Also, instead of waiting and hoping for your life to work out the way you want it to and crossing your fingers and hoping that you get a new client in your business or hoping that this girl texts you back or hoping that your, your diet is going to help you lose weight, instead of waiting and hoping for other people to, to help you, for the government to pass a law, or for some other example, instead of waiting and hoping, direct your life. You have, This is a habit. You have a habit of waiting and hoping. You need to ha install an alternative habit of directing your thought energy towards the possibility space the, 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 the timeline that you want. Because remember, the possibility space, there's infinite potential timelines. When you wait and hope for, for things to turn out your way in your favor, then you just basically allow the script, you allow the flow of reality to just choose the outcome for you. You're not taking control. You're not creating your life. You, to be a conscious creator means to wake up and to create the next moment. The current moment has already been created, but the future moment, the upcoming moment, could potentially be anything. So you need to go out into the future in your imagination and create it. I've spoken about this in my video, how to control reality using the plate technique. Go check that out. And then once you direct the, the flow of of reality by focusing your thought energy on the outcome, the timeline that you want to embody by putting yourself in it, being in it and living in it, using the plate technique, hopefully, that's a really good way to do it, then you need to replace the habit of controlling reality and needing it to go your way 
and going according to your plan, which is actually the pendulum's plan, because your mind has all these plans and ideas of how your business is supposed to be set up, how you're supposed to date girls or how you're supposed to lose weight, how you're supposed to do spirituality. Instead of suggesting that reality has to unfold according to your plans and then whenever something goes wrong, you start to get worried and anxious because you, 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 you need reality to go according to your plan. Instead of doing that, that's your habit of controlling, needs to be replaced with the habit of going with the flow and following your highest excitement, trusting your intuition. And then when something goes wrong or something doesn't go according to plan, instead of expressing anger like you normally do and getting angry and saying, oh, shit, my plan is failing. Instead of that, you need to realize that it's actually an advantage. Which is what I talk about in my video, problems are good. And I talk about how to use the advantage method. When something's going wrong, realize it's actually going right. But it's just not going according to your plan because your plan w w is only one possibility that it could unfold, but there's an infinite way that your goal could be reached. So when you insist that the goal has to be achieved according to your narrow confines, your preconceived idea, then it never gets achieved because reality, God, you could say, or ec outer power, the the infin infinite potential, the possibility space actually has a more intelligent, elegant, and simplistic way for you to achieve your goal that's easier and that's more energy efficient, but it can't bring you along the path of least resistance towards your goal if you're too busy fighting and rowing against the flow. You're not going with the flow and allowing the flow to carry you to your direction but you're fighting against it, insisting that the plan needs to unfold your way. And the last habit you need to rewire is instead of, instead of letting outer events dictate who you are and letting outer circumstances and your, the, the situation of your life dictate who you're being, instead you need to set who you're being first. You need to be who you want to be first. And don't worry about what external reality is showing you because eventually over time when you stay consistent with this reprogramming, when you actually are consistent with it, when you consistently be who you want to be, then reality shifts around you. All right. So if you want some extra help with doing this, because this requires work to reprogram your mental habits. No, it's not the pendulum's work. It's not the like work hard. It just requires consistency. And if you could do this all yourself, if you want, you could read reality transurfing, you can read Vadim Zeeland's material. You can figure this all out yourself. It's possible. You're a creator of reality. I believe in you. I have more free videos on the way. So you can use my free videos to create your dream reality for you. Okay. If you want some extra support, some extra help, if you want a community that is also on this path with you to give you some just emotional support to know that there's other people that are going after their dreams as well using this path, then if you're interested, you can join my private community that you can check out more at adamacelli.co forward slash coaching. That's my private community where every week we have lessons about this content here and I have action steps and we do basically trial and error. What's the word? Troubleshooting because in your life, yeah, sure, you can listen to everything I'm saying, but you may have difficulty actually applying what I'm saying. And that's what I do in the community as I do troubleshooting basically to ensure that your transformation unfolds quickly 
and smoothly and so that you have accountability to stay consistent. So if that's something you're interested in, I already have some people in there and we're having weekly calls and they're going amazing and I'm already seeing results and already we're seeing shifts in people's lives that are in that community. So if you want to be part of it, then you can click that link there and join. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have more free videos like this on the way. My goal here on this channel is to help to usher in a new level of consciousness in your life where you're able to live according to your soul's authentic path and you don't have to follow the old way. The old way isn't working anymore. It's just the pendulums have taken it all over. And if you follow the old way, you'll end up being a slave your entire life and you'll be dissatisfied with your life and you won't know why. You'll just be angry and pissed off and and dissatisfied with your life because you won't be doing what you want to be doing authentically. So I want to help you set up your life in such a way that you're living in alignment with your soul so that you can create art and you can just be who you came here to be. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, stay tuned, check out my website. There's free resources on there and otherwise I'll see you in the next video.